I'm Daryl Sutton with Chauvet, and this is Tech Talk. So in a previous video, we talked about starting the process in our lighting design. And specifically, I talked about how to apply budget to your lighting design. And if you remember the example that I used of a wagon wheel, which has the center hub, the spoke, and the outer ring, and how I take that in applying budget to my lighting design, and I turn it into a zone one and supporting one A, a zone two and a zone three, and lay that over the stage. And that is kind of my approach in how I applied my budget to my lighting design. Today, we're gonna to take it kind of the next step further, and we're gonna talk about how do we design with purpose? So once our budget's been established, how do we start to apply that budget while thinking more about the design approach and actually designing with purpose for our lighting rig? So every lighting designer has a little bit different thought process on how they approach lighting design. Some will design for kind of the big look, while others will design more for flexibility within the system. Now, neither way is wrong. Um, it's really just designer preference or maybe driven by the actual deployment of the system. Where are we deploying? What do we need to accomplish? For the standard worship environment, I tend to think that designing more the flexibility side of things into your system is more the right approach. However, for special Christmas or Easter events or special artists that come in, maybe redesigning for a big look is the right direction. So I wanna take a look at how I approach lighting design. So I tend to lean more towards designing for flexibility. And for me, I've really kind of boiled that down to four identifiable categories. I like to start with lighting the individual. If you remember how I apply my budget to my lighting design, I start with zone one and one A and zone two being the secondary. That's all regarding lighting the individual. The second category is establishing the depth of field within the stage. The third is exposing volume of the space. And the last, but not least, is creative three-dimensional layering. So today in this video, these are the topics that we're going to address. And so let's get started. Let's talk about lighting the individual. So when we talk about lighting the individual in the worship community, we tend to be referencing the down third portion of the stage. And the reason is, is because this is the area of our stage where over 90% of what is communicated to the audience is actually being communicated from. So how do we approach lighting the individual in this down third portion of the stage? Well, we do that by leveraging what we call front key lighting. And front key lighting is pretty much what it, it implies. It's lighting the front of the individual. Now, although there's various ways to approach this, for my example today, I've decided that I'm gonna use a two-point key lighting the front of the individuals with very wide zone coverage and overlapping between the zones. So for this example, I've got three zones that I've identified with each fixture having two points of front key lighting. Um, so each individual is, will have two sources of light lighting them from the front, giving us about 180 degree frontal coverage. So by lighting the front 180 degrees of the individual, we have essentially created a two dimensional object or individual, which doesn't always translate naturally or realistic to the viewing audience, especially when we're talking about broadcast. So what can we do to help make the individual look more natural and realistic or create the 3D object? Well, we can leverage what's called backlighting. For this example, I've chosen to use a single source for each of my zones, supporting the front key lighting. The sources I chose um, are Fresnel, and I did that for various reasons. Number one, because they have a nice soft beam and nice wide coverage. They translate very well. With backlighting, what we're really trying to do is to accentuate the roundness of the head and the roundness of the shoulders, the curving of the body from being from the back forward. What this does is this helps us to create the individual as a natural 3D object within the space that we're viewing. So when we bring in our front two point key lighting and our single source backlight, we can now see that the individuals in the example are definitely more of a 3D object within the space. So this example that I've been showing you references the front key lighting as well as the back lighting, but it does actually have some ambient light within the space. So this may be your house lights at 30, 40%, or it may just be light pollution coming in from the outside. 
But I want to take a look at what does the individual look like within a totally pitch black dark space. And that's what it looks like. Although that's a very cool look and it may be something we want to leverage at the right moment during our service, it's not something that we can use as our mainstay for the lighting design is complete. So what I mean by that is that the individuals are lit well, but we've only started creating our painting or the picture that we're trying to create. We need to establish much more within the space for the viewer, but also because there's a lot more going on within the space that we need to have the flexibility and the ability to light. So, how do we do that? We can start by establishing the depth of field. So in establishing the depth of field, essentially what we're doing is we're creating the furthest point that we want the viewer to be able to see. Now there's many different approaches in this, um, everything from big LED video walls to LED vertical strips or set pieces. The most common approach is using kind of what's there, and that's lighting the back wall. And that's what we're gonna look at today. So I've chosen to use nine batten style fixtures that are mounted in the grid, firing down, edge to edge from left to right, slightly offset from the wall. What this allows us to do is to create a nice even color wash on the back wall, which is defining the depth of field or the furthest point that we want the viewer to be able to see identifying everything else forward of that as being our staging area. So when we add in our front key light as well as our backlighting with the site fixtures on the background, we now have three dimensional individuals within a defined space, which is defined by the depth of field that we've created. So after establishing our depth of field, we now need to move to what I call exposing the volume of the space. We've now effectively lit the individuals, as well as we've defined the depth of field by lighting the back wall. However, you can see from this example that there is a gap between the two. And that gap is represented here. Now, there's a lot that's going on. Two things we need to do. One thing is we need to tie kind of what's going on downstage with what's going on upstage. The other portion is, as you can see in this example, that there's actually activity that happens there. There are individuals that are actually there that need to be lit. They're part of the picture that we're trying to create. So how do we address this problem? Let's take a look. Now, when I'm talking about lighting the volume of the space, there's a couple things that I'm interested in. I'm interested in the coverage left to right, but I'm also interested in covering the up and down stage area as well as the vertical. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration. If you look at the example on the left, I've got a nice even coverage across the stage of the fixtures that I'm deploying to light this area. That gives me the nice left to right coverage. If you look at the example on the right, you can see that I actually have that layered in two different pipes up and down stage, essentially one upstage and one mid stage. Now, I like to lean more towards wash style units for this application. In this example, I've used the R2X wash specifically because I like the pan and tilt capability, I like the zoom, as well as color mixing. This gives me a lot of versatility in how I'm gonna use and leverage these fixtures within this space. Now, I tend to take a little bit different approach. As I mentioned earlier, lighting designers all have a little bit different approach and it's personal preference. Um, I like to do what's called the staggered layout in an up and down configuration. Now this does kind of create one little issue and that issue is individuals who have this craziness with not wanting odd number fixtures in the rig. I get it, I understand. However, I personally think that it creates more up and down stage depth and makes it a lot easier for me to accomplish and achieve the looks that I'm trying to, to achieve with less hassle behind the console and forcing it to happen. So as you can see in this example, I have the fixtures in a natural 50-50 position, as well as a little bit of zoom and some blue color added to the space. I've achieved my nice horizontal coverage, if you will, left to right across the stage, as well as I've lit the vertical or the volume of the space really well, especially if I have haze in the room, um, and really kind of shored up that gap between what's happening downstage with our front key lighting and our back lighting, as well as what's happening by lighting the back wall. Now, I would tell you that in this area, versatility is key. I know we all can't necessarily go out and just buy whatever we want. Some of us are stuck with and limited to the products that we currently have deployed. However, in this space, 
it's probably the one area I would say spend a little bit more of your budget to make sure that you have the right versatility, the right style fixture to achieve what you need to achieve. What I mean by that is, is don't get locked into fixed optics. And I see this a lot within the church world. Fixed optics, what does that mean? Essentially what it means is there's no way to change the coverage of the fixture, the output coverage, if you will. Um, if you have motorized zoom, the capability to change the lens option, or even the ability to put basic diffusion in front of the fixture, that is essential for this application. Because what I see a lot is individuals that buy fixtures that have a fixed beam angle that can't be altered in any way, shape, or form. And essentially, this is what you kind of end up with. Uh, very spotty, uneven uh, coverage, and it can be very challenging to find the right angles to give you the coverage that you're trying to accomplish or you end up buying two to three times as many fixtures as you really need to have within the space, which is a cost of ownership issue that you have to deal with later. So let's recap where we're at. We've lit the individual, we've created our depth of field, as well as we've identified the volume of the space. Now this, in my opinion, is the foundation for any lighting system within the worship environment. If you do nothing else but this, you're getting it pretty spot on. Now, there are ways that we can kind of advance to that and take it to the next level, and we'll get there in just a second. But I also wanna talk about what we've achieved in these three different segments as we went through the design process. What we've done is we've created up and down stage layers. We have three layers. And even within our center layer, we've got a couple layers. So we might even have four layers in, built in if we wanna look at it from that perspective. We've also created a horizontal layer. So in everything we've done, we have nice even coverage left to right of the stage, whether it's the upstage wall, the space in between, or our front zones with key lighting, we have everything lit horizontally, very nice and even. Now, the one area where we could take it to the next level is looking at a vertical layer. Right now, we really kind of only have one layer on the vertical plane, and that's kind of our top point or our grid. So if we want to take our lighting visual to the next level, we can look at vertical layers and adding those into our system design. Right now, we essentially have one layer. We have our top layer or our grid that's been established. But if we want to actually create what we would call creative three-dimensional layer or that vertical layer, um, there's a lot of different ways we can do it. So let's take a look. So here's the example that shows visually on the left our horizontal coverage, nice, evenly across the stage, as well as on the right here, we can see from the angle that we have the nice dimensional depth that's being created by the fixtures in the staggered configuration, again, at a natural 50-50 position. So the most common starting point is leveraging moving head, hard edge, spot, or profile fixtures mounted in your grid. For this example, I've leveraged the Maverick MK1 spot fixture. So, Leveraging the same two pipes, the upstage and midstage pipe that I put the R2X wash earlier in the lighting design, uh, I'm going to use the same staggered configuration that we talked about. And yes, that is, again, another odd number of fixtures. If that bothers you, remember, a spare on the shelf never hurt. But again, the reason I do this is because it naturally gives me that dimension of up and down as well as horizontal with really little to no effort in creating dimensional depth of my stage. So now adding in all the other elements of the design that we have so far, we can see that we're creating a nice visual picture that will support the emotion of practically any moment that we need to create. Up to this point, all of our fixtures have been mounted in the grid or the upper level. However, when we think about creative three-dimensional layering, we're talking vertical, right? So an easy way to kind of take it to the next step or the next level is to establish fixtures simply placed on the floor. And if we leverage very similar moving head style profile fixtures on the deck and create light coming from the stage up, we now have light coming from a different direction, which can help to create that dimensional depth that we're trying to accomplish. So let's take a look at a very simple example of how we can achieve that, uh, both vertical, horizontal, as well as our three-dimensional depth. So in this example, I've deployed four fixtures on the floor. You can see that we have them somewhat evenly spaced. There's an open gap in the middle, and typically we would want that because we may have a video screen or other set design piece that's there that we don't want to block. 
Um, but we do have nice coverage left to right of the stage. You can see in the right picture that we've kind of staggered it, done an offset, created what I would call a V-shape uh, in the fixtures. Again, in a 50-50 pan tilt position, it gives us natural dimensional depth being built into our look. That's what we're trying to accomplish, something natural that's easy to execute. So when we add our upper profile fixtures and our deck fixtures or lower fixtures, you can see now with light coming from two different directions in all of our staggered configuration, we have some nice dimensional depth that's being in, introduced into the space. So adding it all together, we can see the visual picture that we are now painting. We're talking about the three dimensional lighting layer um, and we've identified the top vertical layer We've identified the lower vertical layer. And now I wanna talk about a topic that kind of hangs there in the middle that I've defined as the suspended layer. So the suspended layer is exactly what it says. It's the layer that's suspended somewhere between the top and the lower vertical layers. What this does is add an additional layer of light that comes in and is introduced and can be a various type of product. It can be anything from profile fixtures, beam fixtures, or wash fixtures. So for this example, let's take a look at what I've decided to deploy. And I've decided to leverage what's also called side lighting. So for this example, I'm using a wash style fixture. What I've done is about four foot below the, the main grid. Uh, I've done an up and down stage pipe on the far left and far right of each stage with five wash fixtures on each pipe, 10 total. So when we deploy that, we can see that we now have lights coming from a different elevation, as well as a different angle than the two mid-stage pipes that we had created when we were identifying the volume of space. And what this does is this is leveraged to still light the volume of space, but it just gives us another creative light layer or edge to our lighting system that can be introduced with a lot of different layers that have already been created. So here's a couple more views just showing us what that suspended layer looks like with the side lighting coming in, covering the band. Again, it just gives us another vertical layer that we can leverage or that we can mix in with everything else going on. So when we take a look at everything that we've designed, we can see that we have nice even coverage amongst multiple layers nice even coverage horizontally, nice even coverage up and down stage, and we have nice vertical coverage as well with our lower, upper, and our suspended layer. This really will give you the flexibility to create the visual impact that is needed for whatever the moment might be within your worship environment. I hope there's information in this video that will help you with many, many lighting designs to come in your future. I wanna leave you though with one thought. And the one thought is, is always be finding the ways to energize your creative juices. Now for me, I have a saying that there's no right and wrong in lighting, there's just good and bad. And although some guys may not agree with that statement, I make that statement because I think sometimes whenever we think there's a right and a wrong way in lighting, we don't always allow our creative juices to flow. We don't try new things. And so with that, um, I wanna leave you with that thought Find the things that allow for your creative juices to flow and for the new ideas to come. And until next time, remember, work hard and stay humble.